G'day folks, uh, it's Jim here from Orchard Forex and it is uh, Sunday the uh, 2nd of August. Uh, well last week saw another uh, heavy uh, sell-off in the US dollar, although it did recover a little bit of its lost ground uh, by the end of trade on Friday. Uh, the dollar index fell to a low of uh, 92.55 I think it was, uh, which was last seen in May uh, 2018 uh, before a, a bounce uh, into the close of trading. Uh, and I think it finished at 93.46. The euro uh, was the currency leading the way higher with Europe's uh, supposed uh, coronavirus advantage over the US underpinning the single currency, uh, while the uh, dire US GDP reading seen last Thursday out of the States, uh, contracting at 39% uh, annualised was the worst ever seen, and that didn't, uh, didn't do much to help the dollar at all. Uh, looking ahead, we've got the uh, non-farm payrolls uh, that to contend with this week, uh, while we also have the Democrats and the Republicans uh, continuing to argue over the next move to extend the emergency assistance programme. Uh, particularly with regards to the level of assistance uh, to provide for the unemployed. Uh, elsewhere, stocks remain uh, pretty volatile and choppy, but despite the uh, dire economic outlook, the indices are generally uh, looking pretty firm at the moment, near the top of the range, and really not too far from the highs of the rally that we've uh, seen since March. Elsewhere, gold and, uh, gold and silver have been interesting, uh, with gold now flirting with the $2,000 an ounce level, uh, already at an all-time high, um, and we'll go and have a look at the charts in a minute. Um, before then, if we have a look at the trends table, uh, the EU currencies, uh, Euro, Sterling and Dollar Swiss, um, or the Swiss franc I should say, they seem to have further potential medium term strength ahead of them. Although having said that, the, with the bounce we did see on Friday, it looks as though we might uh, get better levels to buy those currencies. The Aussie and the Kiwi are turning a little bit more neutral. The domestic economy here in, in Australia is looking pretty dire. Uh, and I think the Aussie probably at 72 cents was somewhat overdone. We have seen a pullback of around a big figure in both the Aussie and the Kiwi, and uh, I think there could be a little bit more downside uh, early in the week, although we have got the RBA uh, interest rate decision and statement tomorrow. Dolly Yen had a huge day. That um, It fell to a, a low last, or uh, 104.20 I think was the low, but it, uh, it then traded back to above 106. We're going to have a look at the charts in a minute, but it put in a huge uh, outside uh, bullish reversal session. So that might signal further upside there for the dollar. Uh, the dollar index, uh, it's become rather overdone on the downside, maybe turning a little bit higher. It might be a bit too early to uh, tell yet, but we'll we'll go and have a look at that. Uh, the uh, stock markets are pretty neutral at the moment, as I say, they're choppy and directionless. Um, gold looks um, looks good for a test of two two thousand dollars an ounce, but once again, that's uh, becoming a bit overbought, and uh, uh, we may see better levels to buy it. Euro yen, with that move that we saw in dollar yen, particularly on Friday, the cross uh, now looks as though it might be turning higher. We've got some yen weakness, although how long that'll last. Uh, is anybody's guess, given the uh, fragile nature of the uh, global economy at the moment. Sterling Aussie looks a little bit better bid. I think uh, that's back up at 183, and I think that might have a little bit more ahead of it. Elsewhere, the crosses are looking pretty mixed and neutral, so I wouldn't get too involved. So um, we're just going to have a quick look at the calendar. OK, so briefly on the calendar, as you can see, Monday looks pretty much dominated by the uh, global manufacturing uh, PMIs. That's uh, really all that's uh, on the agenda to, uh, for Monday. But uh, Tuesday uh, gets pretty busy, starting off with some Australian Day, the retail sales and the trade balance. And that comes ahead of the RBA decision. Uh, no change to policy is going to be made there, but uh, uh, the interest will lie in how uh, dovish the uh, the statement is going to be. And the, presumably the uh, RBA will stay, say that they stand by to do whatever is necessary to, uh, to assist the economy. Uh, the EU PPI... Um, and then that, uh, that's probably about it. There's not a lot, lot to come from the States uh, on Tuesday. Uh, Wednesday kicks off with the uh, New Zealand uh, unemployment. And then we get the services and composite PMIs, the EU retail sales. And uh, then we've got the ADP unemployment number coming out of the States, uh, which looks to be uh, set to add uh, 1.25 million jobs. Um, Thursday is the Bank of England interest rate decision Bank of England meeting. I think that'll probably be much the same as the RBA. The initial job list claims are also out, which will be important on th Thursday evening Australia time. Uh, and then on Friday, of course, the main event of the day, well, well we've got the monetary RBA monetary policy statement 
out on Friday morning, but later in the day, all the uh, um, interest is going to lie in the uh, non-farm payrolls, uh, where the unemployment rate looks uh, set to have improved from 11.1 last month to 10.7, with uh, 1.36 million jobs being added to the, uh, the marketplace. So we're going to have a look at the charts anyway. Okay, so here we have uh, an hourly chart of the euro, and as you can see, the euro finished right on the 100 hour moving average, which is the blue line here. And uh, the momentum indicators do hint at lower levels ahead. Uh, that being the case, uh, we, we could see a, a move down to the first FIBO support, 117.33. This is coming off the high seen in Asia at 119.10 uh, on Friday. 117.60, that might provide minor support. And as I say, then uh, 117.30 before the 200 average at uh, 1690, 116.90, uh, which I think with these lows here is probably as much as we can expect on the day. Uh, the PMIs might uh, tell us something differently, but uh, uh, if we if we do start to pick up momentum, I suppose we could pull back down to this 116 and a quarter level. Uh, I don't really see it there today. On the top side, I'd, I'd, be, I'd be a seller of rallies today. Um, I don't really think we're likely to get much much ahead of sort of 118 and a quarter if we even if we get up that far, but uh, I'd be selling into a rally there with a the stop loss placed above uh, the 119.10. If we move further out, the uh, the four hour indicators are also showing that we've got uh, some downside uh, possibilities. So I, I would be looking uh, to, to uh, sell into rallies. The dailies look as though they could be becoming somewhat overbought. So. Once again, for the first time in uh, quite a few days now, I do prefer to be uh, trading uh, from the short side. And um, as I say, I think you just keep a stop loss uh, either at the 61.8% uh, level at so one eight, yeah, 118, 17, 18. I'd be keeping a stop loss above there, really, um, and certainly above uh, 119, 10, but I don't think we're going to go there. The, hour, uh, the, uh, the weeklies are big upon. They are picking up momentum there. Uh, we did try to break above, let me go out to the monthly chart. We did try and break above the uh, monthly trend line there. Came a little bit unstuck at the 100 month moving average, which is the blue line here. I've come back to uh, trade just below it. But the uh, the monthly charts might be picking up some mild momentum and uh, the weekly certainly are. So while I prefer the downside at the moment, uh, I don't think uh, this uh, overall um, European euro uptrend is probably finished with yet. It may be we are we are in for some choppy trade around here now. Uh, there's no real reason for the euro to head skywards. Really, the ECB wouldn't want that. But um, I, I can see that eventually we might uh, try and see what's at 120. But uh, like I say, in the meantime, be be, be a little bit short and uh, look. Uh, I think on the day probably look for a range of say 118 and a quarter to 117 and a quarter. But uh, certainly, I I think we might see levels below 117 before perhaps we pick up speed on the top side again. Uh, before we move along, I'll just take a quick look at the monthly Ichimoku chart. Uh, you can see that 100 month moving average there. Uh, but before then, we've got the uh, uh, cloud base and the euro is uh, making an attempt to penetrate the, uh, the base of the cloud. So uh, it may be that, that the, the base here, where's that 117.30, that, that may provide some support on the day. And uh, but I think if we if we do break below there, then I think we uh, we, we can make a, a bit more uh, downside acceleration towards uh, 117 and possibly towards 116. Moving forward to dollar yen, right here we have dollar yen. Now that traded down to one one so one oh four twenty, a little bit below that actually one oh four eighteen, and then bounced strongly to one oh six oh five, where it uh, came up against. Uh, these previous support levels now turned re resistance, um, but uh, this is the four-hour chart. The the hourlies are picking up a little bit of positive steam now. If we go ahead to the dailies, as you can see, it's made quite a, a decent-sized bullish uh, outside reversal session uh, to come up. And it's currently sitting up against this uh, twenty-three point six percent FIBO level. Um, the dailies do seem to be turning slightly higher, perhaps. If so, I think uh, we can look back to the four hour chart and uh, the initial resistance that we're going to come across here looks to be at this 106.05 level, 106 figure five, something like that. Um, beyond there though, we can uh, 
head on towards uh, this 106.40.45 area, which uh, is both a 50% pivot of this move and uh, also this uh, uh, downtrend resistance area. I don't think we're going to see it much above there today, but if we do, then we can probably head back up into to, into around this sort of area around the 107 level. Don't think we're going up there today. Uh, with just the PMIs on the board, but I think uh, I'd be buying dips now below so one oh, oh, around 105.50 on the day, looking for a break of 106.05 and maybe a move up towards 106.40. Sterling seems to be doing okay at the moment. It did uh, correct uh, low in line with the euro on Friday. As you can see, we almost traded up to the March high. I, you can't really call that a double top, but uh, it may turn out to be that way. But uh, this level here was at uh, 1, what, 132, and we got up uh, on Friday to this round, 131.70 or so. And uh, it turned a little bit lower. The four hour charts might be pointing down a little bit too. Uh, the dailies, on the other hand, still look uh, pretty firm. And it could be that we do. Uh, we do want to take a look at this 61.8% uh, of the whole uh, move down from that 143.70 all the way down here to, to this uh, here 114. So um, while I do think uh, sterling is a little bit toppish on the day, the uh, daily uptrend is still higher and the, the weeklies also, well, they're pretty neutral, but they might be wanting to trend slightly higher. We are above the uh, 100, and two, well, well above the 100 and 200 week moving average. And we're also sitting on this uh, long term trend resistance going back to 2013. Uh, so if we if we do uh, head, to, if we can take out the um, this last week's high, then I think uh, we we probably can head a fair bit higher. But with Brexit talks uh, still going on and going nowhere, uh, it's hard to get too uh, enthusiastic about sterling at this point in time. Dollar Swiss uh, was interesting on Friday. Um, that uh, it's come down and it's made a new long-term low down here. Uh, Do Dollar Swiss actually did make a new five-year low. Uh, 1955, I think, was uh, uh, Friday's low. Yes, 1955. So it took out this low here, and this was uh, I can't even remember what this big spike was back here. I think that must have been uh, Swiss Bank pull pulling out of uh, supporting Euro Swiss. So. Anyway, it, uh, dollar Swiss does seem to have further downsides towards it. Uh, it's not particularly something I trade necessarily. It's uh, too hard, I think. But uh, certainly the, the direction does point lower, suggesting that uh, we are going to see further dollar weakness ahead. Although in the short term, as with the other currencies, we bounced off the, the low on Friday. Uh, and we could be heading back up here towards the sort of 92, 92 and a half level. Uh, just a quick look at the Aussie. Uh, that made a high of 72.25 on Friday uh, and before giving up 70 or 80 points. But uh, the uptrend still remains firmly intact. Uh, the the daily, uh, the four hourly charts are pretty neutral at the moment. I think there are better things to trade than the Aussie right now. Uh, I have to say there is some bearish divergence on the daily charts here. I think at 72 cents, as I said before, probably slightly overdone up here, uh, given the state of the domestic economy in Australia. Uh, and I, I would be selling rallies uh, with a, a defined stop loss pretty pretty tight above uh, 72 and a quarter, because as I say, the, there's no real sign yet that the, the uptrend is finished with. But uh, just for the time being, and given, given this divergence, I prefer to uh, sell rallies. And that applies to the Kiwi as well. I won't really go into the Kiwi too much. We've got a bit of support here. This is a Kiwi for our chart. We've got we've got some support here, at sort of sixty six twenty five or so. But if we and if we go through there, uh, we we might hit a bit lower. I don't think we're going to do an awful lot today, but uh, it, do, it does look the same as the uh, Aussie high, uh, higher highs price wise, um, but some bearish divergence appearing. Uh, the weeklies. Uh, a, a slight slightly positive in momentum, but uh, not a great deal in it. Um, more importantly though, let's go and have a look at the commodities. Okay, so this is a monthly gold chart we've got here. And as you can see, we're in blue sky territory. So there's not really much we can chart, but uh, it's made this long term cup formation, I guess. Um, and I think we're probably, now we're above the previous high, 1920. I think we're, we're probably likely to have a look at 2000 up here. But I would say that uh, there is some divergence, albeit mild, on the, on the monthly charts. And uh, in the nearer term, the dailies are very overbought. So uh, uh, you just need to be a little bit careful about being long up here because we, we could see a move as we saw in silver last week, which we'll show you in a minute. Uh, the weeklies, though, are still pointing uh, pretty strongly higher, albeit once again, they are overbought. 
and the RSIs do seem to be running out of steam. Silver had an amazing week. Uh, I think we pointed out uh, at the beginning of last week that we I thought silver was going to go strongly higher. Uh, well, it did. And then uh, it got up here to this sort of 2620 level, but it didn't take too long before it was back at 24. And then we saw this ghastly spike down to 22 and a quarter before an equally vicious move back up. So I don't think it was probably too kind to anyone who was running any risk either way. Um, but having said that, uh, that, this is just an hourly chart. The four hourlies are not showing us an awful lot now. I think the move is done with silver for the moment. I think it's just going to be nasty and choppy, so I'd stay away from it this week. Uh, the, the dailies are showing signs of topping out, perhaps, but the, the weeklies are beginning to move strongly higher. As I said, we, we came up against this long-term FIBO resistance. Uh, we need to break that 26 and a quarter, and if so, then I think we can probably head on towards 30, but I think that's probably a move for later in the year and if we do see the uh, US dollar come under increasing pressure then uh, that's I think is possibly what's going to propel it and all the other commodities to higher levels. Uh, we're going to have a quick look at the stock markets. Don't really have an awful lot to, to suggest on the stock markets really. We, we've been in this consolidation uh, phase now for a, a week and a half, two weeks or so. Just bounce around. It's pretty volatile but it's uh, without uh, too much direction. The dailies are looking fairly neutral, although the, the RSIs and the stochastics, daily stochastics may be running out a bit of steam. But the weekly still uh, still look pretty good. Once again, uh, the, the, the RSIs in particular uh, are not uh, suggesting an awful lot, but the uh, MACDs are pointing strongly higher. So it could be that we, we do want to go and test this uh, uh, level again up here, so 3,400 or so. Uh, I can't really see why we should, given the state of the economy, but as long as the central banks are underpinning uh, the markets, then uh, anything's possible, I guess. But uh, right now, I, I, I just think uh, it's going to remain choppy, and I, the S&P probably need to trade at leave a wide range, but sort of 3,150, 3,200 on the downside, and uh, sort of 3,350 to 3,400 on the top side, and I'd be looking to, to buy and sell those uh, areas uh, respectively. Pretty much the same here applies to the Aussie market where I've got a, this is a weekly SPY chart. Uh, we're back below the uh, 200 uh, week moving average, but that's uh, that's acted as a bit of a magnet um, for the last, what, two or three uh, two or three weeks really, I suppose for the last, uh, last month or so. And uh, I, I don't really see any real reason why it uh, shouldn't continue to do so. The MACDs still, uh, still look pretty good. So I, I, I would be, if we saw it back below 5,800, I think I'd probably be looking to buy dip. On the other side of the coin, if we saw it back here at around 6,200, I'd be looking uh, to sell into uh, strength, I think. Um, quickly on oil, uh, it did have a nasty spike down last Thursday, but that uh, was very brief. Uh, as we saw, we saw that brief spike down uh, and returned very quickly. And really, we're just re remain within this uh, choppy sideways trade below this uh, large uh, red area, which uh, if we look, go and look at the weekly charts, is the resistance that we've been speaking about for quite a long time now, and it still remains in place. OPEC are beginning to talk about increasing production again in August, so the upside for oil might be somewhat limited. But on the other hand, if we do see any economic uh, recovery, any uh, improved data, then I guess oil will um, start to, to move uh, up through this red band. If we go back to the dailies, it's probably easier to see. Move up through this red band. I'm not sure that it's going to happen early in the week. The dailies still point lower. But all they're doing is unwinding their previous overbought situation while consolidating. So uh, uh, that's uh, that's really about... I haven't, got, I haven't got too much of a view on oil. So uh, we'll leave it there for now. There's a full uh, daily uh, update on the website at uh, orchardforex.com. Just go there, uh, support and resistance levels and a few charts. But uh, apart from that, we'll uh, leave it for now. If there's anything sensational happening during the week, I'll uh, put up another video then. So until, uh, until next week, otherwise, I'll uh, we'll talk to you soon. Cheers, bye.